Hates medicosis perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense, we continue our playlist called Labs. In previous videos, we have talked about anti-acetylcholine receptor antibody. Today, it's time for acetylcholine trace level in the plasma, also known as choline trace, and it has two subtypes, true and pseudo. First of all, here are your fibers. All of the preganglionic fibers secrete acetylcholine, that's why we call them cholinergic fibers. Also, somatic fibers that are reaching a skeletal muscle release acetylcholine, that's why we call them cholinergic fibers. On the other hand, postganglionic fibers are divided. If you're parasympathetic, you'll secrete acetylcholine, we'll call it cholinergic, but if you're sympathetic, you'll secrete norepinephrine or noradrenaline, and we will call you adrenergic. Now let's talk about the receptor. If you are a skeletal muscle, you have a receptor called nicotinic sub M. N for nicotine, M for muscle. If you are a ganglion, you have N sub N, nicotinic neuron or neural. The adrenal medulla is a modified ganglion. Tell me about postganglionic. Postganglionic parasympathetic release acetylcholine onto muscarinic receptors. Postganglionic sympathetic fibers release norepinephrine onto adrenergic fibers. And these are divided into alpha and beta. Acetylcholine and norepinephrine are examples of neurotransmitters. Who makes them? The neuron. Where? In the soma or the cell bodies. This is the site of synthesis. And then they get transported through the axon into the axon knob or the nerve terminus or the axon terminalis, for those of you who are super sophisticated to the point of being stupid. Just kidding. And then they get released from the vesicles through exocytosis. Exocytosis is an act of transport. Check out my physiology playlist to learn more. So the soma is site of synthesis, axon terminalis is a site of storage and release into the synaptic cleft. Not to be confused with your intergluteal cleft. This is a beautiful cholinergic fiber. It secretes what? Since it's called cholinergic, it will secrete acetylcholine. No kidding. How do we make acetylcholine? Acetyl-CoA plus choline. The enzyme is called choline acetyltransferase. Love it. Now you have acetylcholine into the vesicle. Beautiful. And then the vesicle will rupture through exocytosis, releasing acetylcholine. You can say thank you to a nerve impulse, an action potential, and voltage-gated calcium channels. Calcium is the hero of contraction and exocytosis. Acetylcholine is out. It has three options. It combined to nicotinic sub N receptors, you find this on ganglia and on your adrenal medulla, or it combined to N sub M nicotinic muscle. Where do you find them? Skeletal muscles. This is the neuromuscular junction. Or this beautiful acetylcholine combined to muscarinic receptors, you find these on smooth muscles and cardiac muscle. Okay, we're done. Acetylcholine has performed its job properly. Now let's metabolize it. Let's degrade it. Let's get rid of it. Who's gonna destroy it? Choline is trace. It's gonna break it down into choline and acetate. Choline will be recycled and used to make new acetylcholine. Love it. This is today's topic. So again, what is the function of the choline trace enzyme to break down acetylcholine? When I break down acetylcholine, there is no more action on the ganglia, there is no more action on your skeletal muscles, there is no more action on your cardiac and smooth muscles. So acetylcholine, who makes you? I'm made in the soma and then released by the axon terminalis in the cholinergic fibers. By acetyl-CoA and choline, they combine together to form acetylcholine. Beautiful storage. I'm stored in clear vesicles. I'm acetylcholine for clear vesicles, unlike the norepi. Release. To get released, I need an action potential and I need some calcium influx and I get released by exocytosis. Removal. After I've performed my job properly, you can metabolize me using acetylcholine trace. Why do we get rid of this? Because acetylcholine is very toxic. If we leave it in your blood, it's gonna lead to Dumbles. This could be fatal. What's Dumbles? Diarrhea, urination, meiosis, bronchospasm, bradycardia, emesis, lacrimation, sweating, salivation. This can kill you. So we gotta get rid of the acetylcholine as soon as it has completed its job. How do we get rid of it? We have acetylcholine trace enzyme and we have two subtypes of this enzyme. True, found in the axon terminus or terminalis and pseudo with the P in the plasma, the P. The action of acetylcholine is localized. Why not generalized all over my body? Because it gets destroyed by true and pseudo. 
Why do you destroy it? Because it can be fatal, it can lead to dumbbells. Sites, it's released by central fibers and peripheral fibers. What do you mean by central? I mean somatic fibers or preganglionic autonomic fibers. Okay, what do you mean by peripheral fibers? Postganglionic parasympathetic and postganglionic sympathetic only to the sweat glands. Receptors for acetylcholine, nicotinic or muscarinic. Then the nicotinic are subdivided into N sub M and N sub N. The muscarinic are divided into M1, M2, M3, M4 until M5. Choline is trace. This is the enzyme that breaks down the acetylcholine. This is today's topic. We divide it into true and pseudo. Where do you find the true? Red blood cells and in the axon terminalis with the T. But it's not found in your serum. Pseudo, on the other hand, starts with a P. You find it in the plasma. Starts with a P. This is normal. However, some patients have deficiency of the choline trace enzyme. This choline trace deficiency could be a deficiency of the true choline trace or deficiency of the pseudo choline trace. This deficiency could be congenital or acquired in nature. Here is your acetylcholine, and these are cholinergic receptors. I can give you a drug that will act on the same receptor as if it's acetylcholine. The receptors will get confused and they will assume that this medication is actually acetylcholine when it's not. What do you call this? I call this direct muscarinic agonist or direct cholinergic agonist. Okay, fine. I can stimulate the receptors by another mechanism by inhibiting the degradation of the acetylcholine so that acetylcholine will persist and increase in the synapse. This acetylcholine can bind to this receptor. What do you call this mechanism? Indirect cholinergic agonist. This mechanism is by inhibiting the acetylcholine trace enzyme. We call these drugs acetylcholine trace inhibitors because they inhibit this enzyme. And we divide them into two categories, reversible inhibitors and irreversible inhibitors of the choline trace enzyme. Reversible inhibitors are useful pharmaceutical drugs that we can give to patients. Irreversible are horrible toxins. You can use them as pesticides, insecticides, or, God forbid, war gases. So we have muscarinic agonists such as acetylcholine, methacholine, carbacol, bethanicol. We have muscarinic antagonists such as atropine, homatropine, scopolamine, etc. What is acetylcholine, methacholine, carbacol, bethanicol? These are direct muscarinic agonists. However, I also have indirect muscarinic agonists such as the acetylcholine trace inhibitors. Okie dokie, can you give me an example of a muscarinic agonist? Yes, acetylcholine, methacholine, carbacol, bethanicol, pilocarbine, and sevimaline. These are direct muscarinic agonists. Tell me about indirect muscarinic agonists. You have dunepazyltacrine, rivastigmine, physostigmine, pyrostigmine, neostigmine. These are the good things. Bad things include organophosphates. Tell me about muscarinic antagonists, atropine, homatropine. Ipratropium, teotropium, scopolamine, dicyclamine, etc. Okay, give me a nicotinic sub M agonist succinylcholine. What will that do? It will stimulate your nicotinic receptor. But anesthesiologists can use succinylcholine as a muscle relaxant. Wait, 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 wait a second, medicosis. I thought that succinylcholine is a nicotinic sub M agonist. Therefore, it will stimulate this N sub M receptor at the neuromuscular junction, increasing my muscle contraction. So how come you're saying that it's used as a muscle relaxant, not contractant? Just chill your butt down. We have two phases. Phase one is the depolarization and activation of this receptor and actual contraction. However, phase two is the desensitization of the receptor. The receptor gets sick and tired of being sick and tired and everything gets blocked and that's why succinylcholine can act as a muscle relaxant. Okay, I get it. Succinylcholine can act as a muscle relaxant. Then what? Then you get rid of the succinylcholine. How do I get rid of the succinylcholine? Uh, the same way you get rid of the acetylcholine by the choline estrase enzyme. Aha, uh -huh, I get it. Perfect. But what if I'm a patient who has deficiency of the choline trace enzyme? You will not be able to metabolize succinylcholine effectively. Succinylcholine is going to accumulate and relax your muscles. Oh, why is this a bad thing? Because if I relax your muscles too much, um, your diaphragm is a muscle. You can get 
respiratory paralysis and apnea and die. Oh, this is serious. So if I'm an anesthesiologist and I want to be an honest person, I better measure the level of the choline trace enzyme before ever contemplating giving succinylcholine. You got it. So now we're talking about the test called plasma level of choline trace. Indications to detect pseudocholinesterase deficiency, especially before giving anesthesia. Why? Succinylcholine is used during anesthesia as a muscle relaxant during phase 2, which is the desensitization of the N sub M receptor. The succinylcholine gets inactivated by the pseudocholinesterase in the serum. However, if little Johnny has pseudocholinesterase deficiency, he will not be able to metabolize succinylcholine. Therefore what? Therefore, Johnny will suffer from an increase or prolonged effects of succinylcholine. Why is this a bad thing? Because succinylcholine is a muscle relaxant. Too much muscle relaxation, you get prolonged apnea after surgery and prolonged muscle relaxation after surgery. Another use of this beautiful test is to identify those who were exposed for a long period of time to organophosphate poisoning. Organophosphate poisoning can lead to acquired deficiency of the true or the pseudo choline trace. Interfering factors with the level of the choline esterase in the plasma. Pregnancy can give you a value that's lower than normal. Some drugs can give you a value that's lower than normal. What are these drugs? Atropine, caffeine, morphine, codeine, steroids, oral contraceptives, and quinidine. Be careful. Pseudocholine stress levels cannot be measured effectively after surgery. Why? Because all of these drugs, you give lots of drugs during surgery and before surgery, these will interfere with the result of the test, making the test useless. So if you want to measure the level of pseudocholine stress, you better do it before surgery, doofus. So little Johnny had a deficiency of pseudocholine stress. That's why we use the serum choline stress level test to measure it. What if now we have Raj? Raj does not have a deficiency of the pseudocholine stress. However, he has a mutant non-functioning form of pseudocholine stress. So the level of this enzyme in his plasma is fine, but it is non-functioning. How can I tell? If I measure the serum pseudocholine level, it's going to be normal. So how can I diagnose him early so that I do not give him succinylcholine or I adjust the dose or I give him something else altogether. You need another test called dibucane inhibition number. What's dibucane? It's like lidocaine. It's a local anesthetic. You give it to the patient, it should inhibit their normal pseudocholine trace. And then you measure the dibucane inhibition number. What the flip is that? That's the percentage of your pseudocholine trace that has been inhibited by dibucane. If Raj had normal serum choline stress level, but a low percentage or low dibucane inhibition number, you have your diagnosis. Raj has a mutant, non-functioning form of pseudocholine stress. You better be careful before giving succinylcholine. Otherwise, Raj can suffer from prolonged apnea after surgery or prolonged muscle relaxation after surgery. The crazy anesthesiologist will claim, oh, there must be something wrong with Raj. Shut up. There is just something wrong with your brain. You do not have two brain cells that rub together. No pun intended. Choline trace level in the plasma results and their meanings. Okay, what if you have too much choline trace enzyme in your plasma? What does that mean? Of course, in the plasma is the pseudo. We're measuring the pseudo here. It could be reticulocytosis. What are the reticulocytes? Baby red blood cells. Reticulocytosis. Osis is a condition where you have tons of baby red blood cells. As you know, red blood cells contain choline trace, especially the true one. So you'll have increased true choline trace level. Nephrosis. If I have kidney problem, I will not be able to excrete choline trace. Therefore, it will increase in the plasma. Hyperlipidemia. It could be because your liver is working like crazy. And when the liver works like crazy, it produces proteins, including choline trace, which is an enzyme. And as you know, enzymes are proteins. Diabetes mellitus for an unknown cause. What if choline trace level was low? It could be a congenital enzyme deficiency or it could be organophosphate poisoning, or it could be liver disease. When the liver is toast, it's not making protein and it's not making enzyme, or it could be malnutrition. If you're not eating, especially proteins, you're not making. Struggling to learn about all of these medications? Check out my autonomic pharmacology course at medicosisperfectionalist.com. It will equip you with robust pharmacology knowledge so that you can help patients. 
Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my pharmacology courses. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.